creating a video, you can't just pick up your camera, go record and finish the editing. Unless you're of course shooting a podcast style video, right? If you're creating an animated version or you're creating some sort of a uh, addition or with text or images in uh, in a video, you'd want to make sure that you have a very strong storyboard. What is a storyboard? Storyboard is a visual outline of the video. What are the visual elements that are going to be kept in the video is basically what you have in a storyboard. And why is it important? Because you don't want to mess up the planning of your video. You'd want to make sure that every video is top notch. You know that are necessary are have been recorded. Uh, they have been uh, they can they can come at the right places. Uh, if there are different camera angles that you'd want to play around with, all of that is recorded somewhere. Right, and uh, that is what we call a storyboard. Here's a look of what storyboard is in the terms of production. This is one of these frames from Game of Thrones storyboard. And as you can see over here, these are not the cleanest images possible. They are very roughly drawn figures and ideas that can explain somebody else what the visuals are going to be. And here is what the final video looks like. Right? So you can see how these visuals are exactly matching or overlapping with the storyboard plan. And this is why storyboard is important because you can't have all of those actors uh, come on set and end up recording something that was not ideated. And that's why today I want to talk to you about how you can storyboard in three different ways. The first one is to make sure that you have a script or some sort of a document on which you can ideate, you can plan and you can add uh, information something like this so you can see that this is a video i have kept two different references over here which is what i want to keep in mind and uh, across the different topics that are here i've added the visuals that are going to be supporting it of course this is not the entire video because um, there will there will be a lot more assets that we're going to be using but this is just a start similarly in a different scenario i would end up adding different links or very specifically comments like this in google docs so you can see over here for these specific things like forms, service and real-time updates, there are specific comments that have been added and these are uh, assets or links to different things on the internet. I can keep all of these and share it with my editor who can pick up all of these images from different places and put it all in a video together. That's the first way of doing something. Now what I also end up doing is making sure that uh, there are, if there are specific links to be added, if there are specific videos to be added, those videos are, uh, or, or those links have been very clearly demarcated in the script. Well, that's the first way. The second way is for us to create simple frames and uh, uh, show exactly what you want on screen. Of course, this might get tricky if you do not have a very good drawing, unlike a lot of friends of mine who have insane drawings. But anyway, uh, look, look at this for instance. Now, these are frames from a small video and these videos are supposed to be uh, uh, four or five seconds long and for each of these different frames i can sh i can see that uh, the different sort of animation that is required over here i can see that there are four people on the screen and then there is something with a laptop uh, followed by there are few emails that are supposed to be opened and those emails get closed and they are getting sh they are getting shared from one place to another so this is what this storyboard looks like, which is just a very small duration of what we want. You can choose to get as detailed with the storyboard as possible because as long as you have very specific animation requirements, that, that sort of storyboard will help you in making sure that the entire idea is followed to the T. Now, the general trend while storyboarding in a, in a fashion like this would be to make sure that you have the major frames, you have if there are very specific transitions, if you have any specific assets, you can also add them and probably create some sort of a mood board. Here's a different sample that I had created. Now over here, you can see that there were links or images directly from uh, the script. And along with that, I have added some sort of a mood board. I've added some sort of an asset design of what I wanted to be uh, done in the video. So there are different ways and at different points in time, I've added different indexes. So for instance, at different points, you can see that here it says 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Of course, it's not readable. But anyway, and you can see what was the animation that was intended at all of these points. So you can see 1 over here, 2, 3 and so on. 
So this is a very uh, detailed style of storyboarding. Now this can be done very easily if you have a pen tablet or probably an iPad and that will uh, make your life sort of easy. But make sure that uh, to give it as much detail as possible. But even having a storyboard by itself is a great addition to your video production pipeline. Well, the next thing that I generally do is when I have all of these assets collected in a single video, I take it all into Premiere Pro. Now Premiere Pro has this insane capability of uh, something called freeform editor and uh, let's look at that over here now. Now once I have all of these assets available in my Premiere Pro, I've downloaded everything and imported everything in Premiere Pro. Now over here in the project panel, I can select firstly the icon view and that way I can see all of these different assets that are going to be used. Next, I will click this particular button called the Freeform View button. What it allows me is to move around files as I want to and place them one after the other if necessary. So for instance, I want to place these images one after the other and I want to have um, the Adobe icon over here and then XD and Illustrator icons over here along with this image. So these are the things that I will keep over here. Now I can keep on adding more images. I can increase or decrease in size. I can also move around how these elements would have to come together. So maybe um, the Figma button would come over here and the icon over will come somewhere over here. And along with this, I can just end up uh, moving all of these images as necessary and creating it some sort of a timeline so that I can see what are the files that I want to keep where and when. That helps me make sure that everything is going in my timeline in order right after this step. Well, that is how basically I storyboard in the three different ways. Now, you can choose to do the same thing or you can modify your uh, your process depending on what your team's allocation is and what's, what's the sort of understanding with your team. Uh, maybe in certain films you might want to give a lot more detail and the, in other cases you might uh, just want to skip over it because it's okay for the editor to take a call. Well, all of that said and done, you'd want to make sure that when you are recording at least what I am doing right now, you'd have to make sure that all of these assets are uh, recorded correctly, have been recorded timely and all of these are available before they get onto the editing table. Well, just as a closure, make sure that you like this video, subscribe to our channel and follow for the upcoming videos that we are going to be talking about design and video creation process. I will see you in another one.